tallest man in the world is eight foot three. He lives in Turkey and he's 35 years of age. The smallest woman in the world is two foot, lives in India and is 24 years of age. I saw a photograph the other day of both of them together on the backdrop of the Himalayan mountains. And what a contrast that was. There are some big people. There are some small people. There's the little and the large. Those who are great and those who are not so great. You know, the Bible speaks about many such people. And as far as stature is concerned, we read in the Old Testament that the first king of Israel, Saul, was head and shoulders above all the rest. He must have been a tall young man. And then when we come over into the New Testament, we read of, a, of the chief tax collector, the inland revenue man, we would call him, and the Bible says that he was little of stature. He was very small. Now, you may be listening to me tonight or this evening, and you may not think you're too great or too big. You may think you're very little and very small in many ways. But as our previous preacher has been saying, God loves you. And Christ died for all mankind, whoever or whatever you may be. Now, there's one thing about this man, Zacchaeus, or a couple of things that I want to leave with you before Wilfie comes and sings to us again. And the first thing is this. This man had a great desire, a great desire to see Jesus. The Bible says he sought to see Jesus. That word seek means that he was, he was really desperate. He wanted to see the Lord Jesus Christ as he passed by. Now, we know that he was a rich man, but he wasn't a happy man. We know that he had a good job, but he wasn't a happy man. We know that he lived in Jericho, which was one of the up-class leafy suburbs, and he wasn't happy. And maybe you're here tonight and you have a good job and you have a good home and you have a good family and you have plenty of money and your health is fairly good and thank God for that. But you're not a happy man. You're not a happy woman. You're not contented tonight. And this man had these things, but he, he wasn't contented. But there was that desire, great desire in his in his heart to see Jesus. He had no contentment. I wonder, are you content? Are you at peace with your soul and with yourself tonight and with God? Because we're supposed to be and we can be. And it's a wonderful thing to have peace with God, assurance of heaven and sins forgiven. My dear friend, if you haven't got contentment or peace, and let me say to you, you could not have it. You couldn't be a woman of peace or contentment if you haven't the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Because that's why he came, and that's why he came to die for us, that he might give us peace and joy and eternal life. We read in the Scriptures where he says, Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So as the Lord Jesus was passing through Jericho, this little man ran, and he ran up a sycamore tree so that he might see Jesus passing by. So the first thing was he had a great desire. Secondly, he had a great difficulty. He couldn't see Jesus 
the Bible tells us, with the crowd. There was a crowd hindering him, and that's why he had to flee and climb up the tree. Now, he must have been a right healthy man, and he must, he must have been a fairly agile man to climb up one of those big sycamore trees. I, I couldn't climb a tree. I can hardly climb out of the car at the minute. But he climbed up this tree and ran up, and there he sat on the tree and waited for Jesus to come by. And you see, he didn't let the crowd stop him. He didn't let the crowd, the difficulty in his way, hinder him. I wonder what the difficulty is in your way tonight, this evening. What hinders you? What's that crowd out there that keeps you back from coming to the Lord Jesus? Maybe your husband. Maybe your wife. Maybe the people at work. Maybe some past sin that sins that you have committed and you feel that there's no forgiveness for and no cleansing for and that's what has you restless and that's what has you agitated and you seem the past you never seem to get sorted to get the past sorted out of something maybe happened years ago. I can tell you tonight, this evening, let me say to you that there's a savior from all sin, if you'll only let him in. The text of Scripture that I was saved through 48 years ago down there in Fermanagh, one, one, one Monday morning, was the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleansed us from all sin. And man, I grasped hold of that that day, and I laid hold of it. I'm laying hold of it every day since, <laughs> because there's cleansing and continual cleansing from all sin. So this man had a great difficulty and getting to see Jesus because there were those things in his way. But not only had he a great desire and a great difficulty, he made a great decision, a great decision. You know, the Lord Jesus saw him, and the Lord Jesus sees you tonight. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. That means he sees all, he hears all, he's all-powerful. He can see you tonight. The Bible says that he knoweth our thought afar off. That's before the thought that you're going to think in a minute, five minutes, ten minutes, an hour's time. He knows that thought that you're going to think. This is a mighty God that we are dealing with. This is the Creator. This is the Almighty, Eternal, Everlasting God who knoweth all things, who gave the sea his decree, who, who, whose nations are but a drop of a bucket the mighty God who holdeth the wind in his fist, the eternal creator of all things, sees you and sees me. God's Son, the Son of God, saw him, saw him up on the tree. And he sees you wherever you are tonight. And whatever position or condition you're in this evening, he sees you. He knows where you are. He knows your condition. He knows your heart. He loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. Well, you'll have to come down to his feet. You see, when he saw him, he, he saw Zacchaeus. He says, Zacchaeus, come down. Make haste and come down. And he came down to his feet and came down quickly. Listen, friend, you need to make haste. You need to flee. You need to come. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. You can't fool about with these things. You know, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you tonight, showing you tonight your sin, maybe a backslider, maybe you used to run well, maybe you used to enjoy the Lord, maybe you used to be in the Bible every morning, maybe you used to witness to others, but all that's gone. And it's gone because of you, not because of him. You let things slip. But he wants to restore you tonight, today. He wants to bring you back today. He wants to uh, reclaim you today. He wants to save you. He wants to restore you today. And he wants to save the sinner today. And he, that's why we're here. That's why we come here on Sunday evenings. Because Jesus is passing this way. And he's passing this way. And he's passing now. And he says, come, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Come, for all things are now ready. Come, let us return unto the Lord. Come, backslider, come back. Sinner, come back. 
a sinner come to Christ tonight and get those sins forgiven and peace with God and get that joy back in your heart because the next thing that we read about this man, whenever he came down to the feet of Jesus, we read of his great delight because he received him joyfully. He received him joyfully. Friend, it's not a morbid, dull, doleful thing to be a Christian. It's one of the greatest blessings in any man or woman's life. There's joy, joy, everlasting joy, peace with God. Man, it's a wonderful thing to have sins forgiven. It's a wonderful thing to have the burden lifted. It's a wonderful thing to know peace and assurance with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a great delight to my soul to be able to testify 48 years of it. Oh, if only I could transplant what I have over into you tonight. I can't do it, but you can do it. If you come to the Lord, you can do it. And a man called up at the house the other day, him and his daughter, and he screwed down the window. He says, I'm lost. And he says, I, I was lost too. Uh, he says, did you get back on the road again? I said, the, the Lord Jesus Christ found me. He says, could you get me a ticket? I says, no, I can't give you a ticket, but I can tell you how you can come yourself if you want to come. Are you lost tonight? Do you realize that you're lost? Do you realize that you're going to perish? Do you realize that there's no hope outside of this? What we're talking about tonight, the gospel. Do you think Christ died that awful death on the cross for nothing? Do you think they hung him up there to, and then stripped him naked and spat upon him and crowned him and bludgeoned him and battered him and mocked him for nothing? My dear friend, God so loved, so loved. This is love. This is love on display, the love of God at Calvary, bearing his son, bearing our sins in his own body on the tree. Why don't you come to the feet of Christ tonight? Why don't you seek him while he may be found? Why don't you turn to him now tonight and say, Lord, I'm coming, coming now to thee. Wash me, cleanse me in the blood that flows from Calvary. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, loved us and gave himself for us. And you know, he loves you tonight and he wants to save you tonight. He wants to change you tonight. He wants to change your home tonight and your family tonight. And he will do it if you let him, if you'll just come and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Maybe someone's sitting in the car there, there and your window's down and you're listening to the preaching and, and you're thinking, well, that's me. Well, let me say to you, all you have to do there where you are, just, just repent and say, Lord, I'm a sinner and ask the Lord into your heart to save you from your sins. And if you're a backslider, say, Lord, I'm coming back tonight. I'm I want to be restored tonight. I want this delight, this joy back into my soul tonight. And then when you do that, just come out and tell some of us that you've done it. Now, there's a cup of tea behind me here, and you're very welcome to come. And uh, indeed, we would ask you to come. Come on up and have a bit of tea, a cup of tea and a bit of fellowship with us and enjoy whatever's left of this evening together. Thank you very much for listening.